<laughs> All right. Yep. Well, hello, everybody. This is episode 12 of Inclusivity Check. Uh, my name is Taylor McNally. I am the co-founder of Inclusive Canada. I'm a member of the Alberta Humanitarian Initiative and a member of Defund to Fund. Uh, and I'm calling in from Treaty 7 tonight. I'm uh, going to go over to Tierra. Hello, I'm Tierra. I'm with the Fight for Equity as well as Alberta Humanitarian Initiative. And I'm on Treaty 6. Yes, Julia. Hi, I'm Julia. Um, I'm with the Community Inclusive Canada and Alberta Humanitarian Initiative, and I am on Treaty 7. Claire. Hi, I am Claire. I am one of the founders of Water Warriors, Water Warriors YEG um, and a part of Alberta Humanitarian Initiative and coming to you from Treaty 6. Yes, uh, Angela. Uh, Angela, co-founder, Be the Change Drum Heller, calling in from also Treaty 7, so. Hello. Uh, Tigra. Hi, I'm Tigra. I'm one of the co-founders of Lloydminster and Vermilion for Equity, also with Alberta Humanitarian Initiative, and I'm on Treaty 6 territory. Yes, and we have three guests tonight. I'm so stoked for each of these people to be here. Um, let's uh, let's start with Eric. You want to introduce yourself? Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Eric Rush. Uh, I'm a rapper. I live in Edmonton. I'm not sure what treaty I'm on, but much love and respect to all of them. That is, uh, it's Treaty 6 in Edmonton, yeah? Yes. Treaty yes. 6, baby. Yes, represent, all right. Yes, got it. <laughs> we have Benny. Hello. What's good? What's good, y'all? My name is Benny J, founder of 10 of 10 Music and Culture, your regular day guy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> right here representing Treaty 7. Let's get it. Regular guy, he says. He ain't a regular guy. <laughs> it's so uh, And our last guest, we have Joe Nice. What's up, everybody? Joe Nice, um, DJ, record label owner, owner of Gourmet Beats somewhat educated guy, activist, just um, fighting for humanity, freedom, equality, and survival. Yes, I am. Uh... Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Nah, intersectionality, it all, it all, you know, comes together at some point, you, right? You already know what it is, exactly, exactly that. And I'm happy to be sharing this space with everyone here and out to everybody that's in the chat right now on Facebook watching us. Uh, we are global, we are viral right now, and it's gonna get crazy. Yeah. Global, baby. <laughs> International. Yeah, uh, Joe, you're down in the U.S. right now, so we got yes, right. yes, yes, yeah. I grew up in Baltimore, but right now I'm in North Carolina. I'm in Carborough, North Carolina. It's about ten minutes away from the University of North Carolina. Uh, yeah, I'm back here. I've been back here since gosh, September of last year. This time last year, I was living in Canada. I was living in Vancouver. So yeah, you know, so when you say Taylor, I'm an honorary Canadian. It's 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 true. Yes. It's a real thing. Yes. Uh, I'm very excited for this conversation um, because, you know, of course, like I just said, uh, intersectionality, everything just um, really does come together somehow. And um, I, being somebody who works within the entertainment industry, uh, I felt like this is definitely a very important conversation to be having. Um, also somebody as a black woman in the entertainment industry, but not necessarily, I haven't always been connected to that black culture um, within, the, within the entertainment industry, but definitely noting, noticing the lack of representation. Um, and I mean, I put myself into some odd spaces where black people usually are not. So that could also be a thing, but even then, you know, these spaces, spaces should still be inclusive to everybody. So uh, yeah, we are going to unpack, you know, um, chat a little bit about black culture because um, so many things, whether it's music or clothing or um, food, so many things stem from black culture in a really neat way. Um, and I feel like everyone in here kind of has their own perspective on that. Um, you know, and especially it's great to have Benny's voice up in here um, because you have been representing, you know, Black culture in Calgary for many. How long is 10 at 10 been going now? It's over 10 years or have you met the 10 year mark? Uh, 10 at 10 is going to be 10 years old in September, but I've been doing things outside of 10 at 10 and since before 10 at 10 since 2008. So 12 years wow. going on 13 years, I guess. Yeah. 
different things between the award ceremonies that I was running and uh, the Black History Month celebrations and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, the thing I loved about Ten at Ten, we're, we're going to focus at ten at, on Ten at Ten for a minute. Oh, it's like that. Okay, let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> let's run it still. Let's do it. Uh, you know, like I was saying how, you know, I put myself in many spaces where there are not many Black people. And when mm. I first came to Calgary, um, you know, because that, that lateral violence, that internal race, uh, internalized race, it comes from all over the place. So I never felt, you know, I really belonged. In it's any- international. It's not, it's not it's, focused on Calgary at all. Let's, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, it is international. Yeah. You're yeah, right. It is. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but coming here... And, you know, obviously not having that entertainment scene in small communities where I was at and getting emerged in them and wanting to get involved in the hip hop scene and the rap scene. And, you know, going to my first 10 at 10, mm. I, I just, I there, even say word, like there will never be experiences mm. like that. Like 10 at 10 is just its own full experience of so much culture, whether it's spoken word, rap, just uh, just singing, dancing, food, clothing. Um, you know, I would love to hear about h- how your experience has been. I mean, maybe at the beginning uh, of creating this and how it's been so far um, in this city. I think that was kind of, you know, part of the reason that we began it. I think when you think about you trying to find representation of yourself and what that looks like, there was no place to actually go ahead and do that. So, you know, I think from the artistic standpoint, it's like, yo, how can I be a rapper in Calgary, Alberta, and have that in a sustainable kind of way? How can I build an audience that people actually care about things? But then how can I also go to a place that allows Black people to be Black, to wear backwards hats, to wear baggy (laughs) jeans and sneakers, to dress fly, even though it's not a shirt from Aldo or shirt or shoes from Aldo, but still be fly, right? Like, and a lot of the things that ended up happening prior to that, it was like, you know, how do we create this space, man, just where we can just gather, you know, and just feel, feel, feel cool. So those initial showcases were exactly that, like that, like eye popping, like, I can't believe there's this many people of color and, these many artists that are willing and excited to get on stage to meet new people inside a room where you didn't think that maybe Calgary had as many people interested in hip hop. And you can't say that people aren't interested in hip hop. It was the most global and most tolerant culture on the planet. But when you think of Calgary, Alberta, you think of the stampede, you think of country, you think (laughs) that there's no one here that can rap. You think of a special or specific kind of rap, especially at the time. Again, we're talking nine years ago, y'all. We're talking Instagram, was created in 2011, y'all. We're talking like <laughs> before Facebook had photo albums. Can you imagine? You don't even care about photo albums anymore. And we started before the photo albums started. So yeah, we're really at a genesis where, you know, the city didn't even understand um, the different segments of culture, people, um, artists, how they can actually be presented or that hip hop culture was bigger than what you saw on your TV screen as far as Rap City or Much Vibe or that that show that P. Diddy was on could actually, you know, in some way be started, you know, in this city by allowing talent to be seen by other people. And yeah, you did go against that whole idea of, oh, it's hip hop based, so there must be violence. And mm. we never had a single violent act in over in over nine years, right? You had this whole idea that, oh, it's hip hop, so it can't be that good. And people walk in and they're just like, this person should be signed by now, what's going on? So you really, you know, were part of an experience that allowed people to see that hip hop was touchable. You could interact with it. It was positive. It gave people a sense of identity. It gave people inspiration. Um, It just gave a a big spotlight into the idea that I could be from Alberta, but still have a place to call my own. Mm, I love it. And that's definitely how I, uh, how I felt going into these places. Um, I don't know if uh, Eric, have you, do you travel to Calgary much? Have you been at a 10 at 10? Do y'all know each other? Uh, Eric, yeah. So I just I just met Eric recently. Oh. Recently. I'm not even met him. I just mean, I just like, we just, we've been posting his music for the past, what, a couple of years now? Or year yeah, now? yeah, yeah. They've been showing me some love for, for a while. Benji, I think he sent me a, um, a message like a while ago. Um, Benny. So, so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. It's Benny. So, so good. You're so, not the only I, one. I'm Sam. saying ben, Benny J. Benny J. Yeah, yeah. Hey, sent hey. me music a while ago. Um, uh, show me some love. I also went up to Calgary to do a, um, a little interview with 10 at 10 as well. So, yeah, man, for one, big ups to 10 at 10, man. Like, you guys are doing dope. 
doing great things and, you know, giving artists like me and tons of us, you know, a platform, a place where we can go and, you know, you always say, yo, just send us an email, this and that, we'll make it happen. So, yeah, um, I don't, I, um, I come to Calgary maybe, well, not so much because of COVID, but, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd say um, maybe at least once or twice every couple months kind of thing, you know. So, yeah, I always got to pull up, say what's up to the people, you know, um, do my groundwork kind of thing. But yeah, I know 10 out of 10, that's a staple and not just Canada. I mean, not just Calgary, but in Alberta, everybody knows about 10 out of 10, you know. So shout out, you know. He, he said before the photo albums, man, stop playing. Before the photo, can you before imagine? The photo albums, we were like, yo, those photo albums in here? Can you, oh, yeah. we could put these shits online, fam? Yeah, yeah. No, that was a date. Mm. That was a date. Yeah. Oh, no, God. for real, real talk. <laughs> Um, um, Benny J and 10 and 10, man, you guys are uh, inspiration, man. You guys are inspiring, not just the artists, not just people doing um, other business moves, but just the growth of it and how you're able to showcase, you know, not just the big artists, this and that, but put people at the front, forefront, you know, that's what's up, man. And that's what, I mean, that's what it is. That's, that's what it all comes down to, whether it's whatever industry you're in. It's about collaborating and finding ways to um, have what you do and, multiply that by working with other people and you guys can multiply each other's talents multiply right. each other's businesses whatever the case might be 100, you know? yeah. yeah for bless, sure man bless 100 percent. yes and how long you've been doing music eric um i've been um i've been doing music for i wrote my first rap when i was seven. Oh, you know, do you remember i was it? seven i i remember the first um the first of it because I was watching this McDonald's commercial. I don't know, you might remember it. I, I used to live in the States, right? I was born in East Africa. Um, when I was six, seven, five or six, I moved to the US. So um, I stayed there for about nine years, nine, 10 years. Ohio, Georgia, Louisiana, Kansas. Then came to Canada when I was like 14. Went back to the States for one year, but then came back again full time. And then spent like four years in South Africa doing my degree, like um, around 21. But anyways, when I first heard, um, there was this one McDonald's commercial when I, I don't remember how old I was, well, around six or seven, but Buddy was in the McDonald's and he just took a bite of a Big Mac and like there was rap music in the background. So he took a bite of a Big Mac and then all of a sudden he goes into his head and then he gets an idea to write a rap and then he starts writing a rap on his napkin, you know? And like, I remember seeing that commercial and that's the first time it hit me that people write raps. I thought, yo, you just go in and make music. You know, like you just go in, you make music, it's just made, you know, I was like six or seven and it hit me. I'm like, oh, because I always wanted to be a musician since I was a kid. You know, when I first heard Tupac, when I first heard Criss Cross, you know, I, I've always had music, you know, I always had a, a love for music but because I never saw kids as music, as rappers on TV. I was thinking my young mind, oh, kids can't be rappers. Kids can only be actors because I see actors on TV. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to be an actor first. Then when I'm old enough to be a rapper, I'm going to be a rapper, you know? <laughs> and then um, one day, um, there was this one summer where I used to go um, to Columbus and this uh, this lady used to babysit me. Shout out to Lulu. Her name was Lulu. And all she did was watch BET, you know? And all I wanted to do was watch the Disney Channel, right? <laughs> so I used to get there, I'm watching Disney and then she'd pull up, yo, hey, it's my turn. You know, she put on BET all day and she'd record like VHSs because she was going back to Tanzania. And she wanted to take VHS with her. But like, I used to hate it, hate it, pissed me off. And then one day I saw a crisscross video and like, I was like, oh shoot, kids can be rappers too, you know? Cool. And then every single day after then, I kept watching BET just so I could see that crisscross video again, you know? And as you know, TV, you know, you, don't, you ain't going to see that video at the same time. So in doing so, I just ended up watching a whole lot of hip hop, you know, getting influenced by the culture. And then every three, four months, I'd see the crisscross video again and be like, yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, when I started rapping, it was around seven, you know, I wrote the rap. Um, it had it started with like, I don't wanna rap right now. My name oh. is Derek. And, and yeah, it started because in the in the commercial, buddy started this rap like that. I was like, hey, bet, I'm gonna start it like that and I'm gonna make something dope, you know. And I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, man, I thought I was fire, me. So I was like, man, well, I'm about to blow up tomorrow, you know. <laughs> I thought I was ready to go, me, but you know, <laughs> the way life is, you know, you 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 uh, take it one step at a time. But yeah, I've been writing music since I was seven years old. That's when I wrote my first rap, and you know, slowly but slowly, slowly but surely, you know, getting better with my craft, and you know, taking it one step at a time, you know, chasing the dream. 
Yes. Well, I think you, I just recently found out about you from uh, Tierra and uh, right away reposted a song of yours because it got Yeah, I appreciate it. it. I appreciate it. No, I got that repost right away. I got the follow too. I'm like, all right, man, follow back. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that follow back then. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, we got to support one another. I'm just yeah. going to make a, a quick comment too to one of the comments in the comment section here. Mm -hmm. Sabrina, she's like, ah, not all black people know each other which is hilarious, but also, you know, something, and I, I feel like it's not just within, you know, hip hop and rap or within the black community. Like we're just, Calgary is very much like a small town compared to other. Yeah, definitely cities. got a small town feel. We kind of all do know each other and knowing, you know, mm -hmm. how, how, how much Benny is involved and then, you know, seeing your music and your connections, Eric, it's the mm -hmm. only I put two and two together. Sabrina. Yes, <laughs> yes ma'am. <laughs> yes. Uh, Joe, you want to share a bit about your story? Because I mean, you uh, you're in a bit of a, a different genre space and different uh, I wow. mean, kind of different air uh, um, events and festivals, you know? Yeah. Um, for those that kind of know the history, and if you kind of do all the research and put together the family tree, I am the reason dubstep is on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, okay. That, that's, 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 and again, and it, it, everybody kind of knows that and, and it's, it's the truth. I mean, I was the first guy to play it on this side of the Atlantic ocean. Me and my dear friend, Dave Q, we did the first dubstep party in North America. It was back in 2005 and I was playing dubstep even before that. So I've been, I've been playing dubstep probably going on almost 20 years now and it's interesting how dubstep came from South London and South London has a lot of black people. There's also a lot of white people there too. So the whole concept of, I guess, racism in, within that genre never really was a thing because it was automatically inclusive simply by, uh, on the basis of environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, let, let's, two of the biggest producers in dubstep of all time are Benga and Scream. Benga's a black kid, Scream's a tall, length, tall white kid. So there was never really any sort of craziness with it. When you think about digital mystics, Koki's black, Lofa's white, and Mala's biracial. So again, there, there was never, race was never a thing back then. It wasn't like, oh, well, hey, what are we doing? What are we talking about? But when you talk about festivals and racism, the, the, I, I do feel some of that. I do feel that many of these festivals aren't as inclusive as they should be. And especially now more than ever, when we've seen a whole lot of businesses and other organizations put up it, black squares on their Instagram and then put out a statement saying, hey, black lives matter, black lives matter. But then when something actually happens to black people again, or when it's no longer fashionable to start talking about black lives matter, you don't hear from any of these festivals. You don't hear from any of these organizations again. And it, it, it's, it's a bit, it's more than disconcerting. It's more than disappointing. And quite honestly, I'm at a point right now with a lot of these organizations where it's just going to be a massive middle finger to almost all of them. Because if you're going to go ahead and say, hey, you know, if you're going to go ahead and, and use Black people as a marketing tool mm. or a ploy to get more, to, to, to placate certain Black people that come to your festivals or certain Black people that play at your festivals, but then not actually become truly invested in black people, indigenous people, and people of color, then, then what are you actually doing? How genuine are you? What are you, what, what are you? what are you actually about? Are you about making sure that you can sell more merchandise and sell more tickets to your festival? Or are you actually invested in marginalized communities that are a primary reason that you actually have an opportunity to have the festivals that you promote and, and enjoy? So. 2021, I think, is going to be an interesting year because, quite honestly, I don't think anything is going to happen musically in terms of live events or venues this year, this coming year either. Again, I don't want to be pessimistic, but I'm just going to be real and real honest. Not that I would be dishonest with anyone here or anyone else for that matter, but I, I truly believe that summer in 2021 is going to be canceled again, much like 2020. Because where I live, in, again, in my country, we haven't figured out a stimulus package. We haven't figured out how to properly distribute a vaccine. And there's a whole lot of people that don't have health care in the United States. 
And there's a whole lot of countries around the world that are dealing with these problems also. And many venues have closed down as a result of the pandemic. I know we got a whole lot of Calgary in the place. The Hi-Fi Club is one of my favorite places ever to play. That venue got shut down. I, I used to live in Baltimore, where down the road is Washington, D.C. U Street Music Hall, shut down, gone. And U Street is one of the best clubs, not only on the East Coast, but in the United States. So I think summer of 2021 isn't going to happen. And I think there's going to be a lot of organizations, a lot of promoters, a lot of talent buyers, a lot of festivals. A lot of these organizations are really going to have to take a hard look at themselves in the mirror and have one of these come to Jesus meetings with themselves and figure out how they want to move forward as, as not only pillars of their communities, but stalwarts within the entertainment industry. There's going to have to be some people are going to have to really look at themselves and say, hey, look, am I really about Black lives mattering, or am I just going to continue to use Black people so I can get more, sell more merch, uh, and sell more tickets, and hopefully build up my brand? You know, Black people were never meant to be, uh, we weren't meant to be your brand. Do you see what I'm saying? We weren't meant to enhance your brand. We were meant to be part, and, and you know, not only part, but participating and being, we we're meant to be equal, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm, I'm, I just feel as if more and more of these places don't look at black people and black people, indigenous people and people of color as equal. And, and, and I feel that more in North America than I do in other places. In other places, I don't necessarily feel that because it, 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 I'm not gonna say it doesn't exist, but it's less, it's less obvious. And in some places, I don't feel it at all. And quite honestly, the places where I don't feel it at all are, and this is going to be somewhat counterintuitive, but you know, I've traveled a little bit around the world and the places where I don't feel that sort of racism or, or just that strange vibe are places where I don't expect to see other black people. And I, I, I don't know why that is, but it's just, it's just been my experience uh, throughout all of my travels around the world. Um, you know, I've been to Hong Kong a bunch. I've been to China three or four times. And I've been to Bangkok, Thailand a bunch. I just don't feel it in those places. And I don't, I, you know, I need to really sit and have a think about as to why that is. But it just, it just doesn't, I just don't feel those sort of weird racist vibes when I'm hanging out in Ljubljana, Slovenia or Sarajevo, Bosnia or Zagreb, Croatia. But then I'll feel those kind of weird vibes when I'm, every once in a while when I'm walking around Brussels, Belgium or certain parts of London, England, or, you know, or Lisbon, Portugal every once in a while. So it, it's just one of those things. You know, it's interesting uh, just in the, that festival aspect, because I mean, let's mm -hmm. be honest, we go to large festivals where it's been totally fine for people to wear things like headdresses as a costume or, you know, bring out drums or, you know, just completely appropriate a culture that is nowhere near their own. Not to yep. mention a lot of these people that have been attending these festivals, you know, the, this whole hippie culture are the same folks out here marching with white supremacists and hate groups. Like the, that this weird crossover that has happened, like I'm going to feel really weird if I ever have to go to another Shambhala, another Astral Harvest, another, like all the, I'm, I, I'm still, I'm feeling like you, like, if somebody asked me to go, would I go? Probably not. I don't care if everything's paid for. I'm, it's, it doesn't feel like a safe space because they're not putting in that work. And I wonder how, how those, those initiatives can even happen. I mean, they're still not bringing in the necessary, they're still not bringing black and indigenous people onto their boards. You know, when I look at like Face Coast, it's still ran by predominantly white people who are saying they're doing the work. They're doing these weekly talks, but are they having these conversations and bringing the right voices in um, so that, you know, tangible change can happen? I'm not I, I that. thoroughly agree. I thoroughly agree. And, and you mentioned Base Coast and it's not like, it's not like Andre and Liz don't know who I am. You know what I'm saying? And they could, they could call me, they can call Sinistar, Ooh, they can call, call Anna Morgan. Up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not like they don't know me. You know what I'm saying? So, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I'm thinking, like, how much can we expect 
um, companies who are for profit, companies who are, we know what the end game is, right? How much and for how long can we expect them to, you know, like even when they do come out and say, hey, we stand behind this. And every time we know, oh man, they're just saying that, right? Like we yeah. know, we're like, oh, they're just talking that shit. Oh, they're just saying that. That's what they always, right? Mm. Um, and then we get mad about it after, you know, they're not, you know, so how long can we, um, when we know that these guys are for profit, these are profit companies and we know how business works. Business doesn't give, give a fuck about not just black or white, but rich, poor, they don't care. It's can you buy my product? If you can't buy my product, you're no, you're no use to me, you know? So I understand that, yeah, the, and it's not just the ones you name, but. Oh, man down. <laughs> that's a phone, that's a phone. Yeah. Man down. Man I'm, down, man down. <laughs> I'm back in business. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Um, we, we have so many, um, there's, a, there's a lot of companies that we expect, you know, them to stand up and do this, expect, you know, but there's that one quote that says expectations leads to disappointments, you know, because when we expect things, we're putting, we're expecting that these guys have our same morality. These guys have our same quote unquote wokeness. So these guys have our same understanding of it, you know? So, I mean, I understand that, yes, you know, there's people we, we need to hold these, you know, these guys accountable. When you do put up that 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 black um that black square on your Instagram, you know, okay, bet. What else did you do? You just put a black square, or did you send some money out? Did you hire some? What's did you did you do something else? We definitely got to hold them accountable. But then when we um find out that yo they're not doing what they did, you know, really we're mad because we championed them. Oh yo, shout out to this company for doing this. And then when they're not doing it, we're like, oh man, f you, you know. Really, we can't even expect them to do when they do. Cool, bet. What's the next step? What else are you doing? Cool. Appreciate it. But when they don't, um, I get it. We can still be like, yo, man, come on. Y'all ain't doing nothing. But to take it personal and get really upset is just because we, like, they ain't done nothing from before anyways. It's really us who's doing it and then us forcing them to do it and, and applying pressure, you know? So when they don't do it, it's really not just, oh, man, y'all ain't doing this. Like, okay, but we can apply more pressure then. All right, you want, we, we only applied a little bit of pressure last time, but you guys want to do it? Okay, bet. More pressure, you know? You know what? Kinda, you know what? You know? You know what, Eric, and, and I, think, I think conversations like this will eventually make their way to people in those places, yeah. okay? And, and again, it's tough, to, it's tough to make people who aren't invested in these sorts of fights, yeah. invested in these sorts of fights. And That's then, why I like how she was saying we're not in the board yet, right? Like how there's a lot of, because they, yeah. can't, they can't have those conversations without people who, who've been there. Right. They can't have those conversations. If I'm not there, say I experienced this yesterday. You know, if somebody's not there saying, yo, this is happening. Right. So right. those conversations need to definitely happen, you know. But then also, you know, the conversation can happen with a conversation about women's rights can't happen with 10 men. Right. Yeah. A conversation about um, indigenous rights can't happen with, you know, a bunch of black dudes, you know, whatever the case might be. You need you need people to be, you know, I guess this whole thing is about representation, you know. Yeah. And, so, and, and you I know, guess. I, I can speak to that a little bit more actually though, right yes, now about, you know, mm -hmm. the questions you guys are just posing right now. We actually just started this thing called Advanced Music. It started out in Toronto and it started a few months back, but basically the entire initiative is to be the voice for Black entertainers, Black artists in the Canadian music and entertainment industry. So uh, I'm part of the regional sub-community, which is for Calgary. And then uh, Edmonton has a presentation as well uh, by a guy named Shantu Ellis. So we're right, right now in the progress of actually being those voices inside all those rooms, inside all those yeah. festivals, so people can actually have a place to direct their energy, direct their questions, and be held accountable at the yeah. private level, at the government level, and to be like, hey, guys, you guys clearly don't have your stuff in order yeah. right now, and we're going to be kind of that like liaison. So right now, we're looking to put together our uh, executive director for that, but the team is about, there's about 12 of us right now, all from different, yeah. all the major cities in, in, the, in the country, so... We're, we're working on it for sure. So like these questions, those things where it's like, yeah, pose for the camera, say this, that, whatever, black square, and a walk away is yeah. cool, but not cool at all. And we're still in exactly. a period where, you know, like you were saying, Joe, is that we don't know what's going to happen this summer. And I know a lot of entertainment companies and promoters, including myself, we're, we're planning for 2022. Right. So it is about being like, how do you position those tours, those big shows and mm -hmm. do it in a nice and safe way? But then what are you doing on the in-between? Because when these bars return, yeah. like they can't just return to what was right. Yeah. And they can't just like sweep it under the rug yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. If you walk mm -hmm. into the place and there's still only one token, 
you know, black girl or black guy that's, you know, mm -hmm. doing the position versus people in their staff or letting people mm -hmm. in, you know, when they're playing hip hop music. Mm -hmm. Now you can actually call them out a little bit too. So yeah. just getting everybody ready for all that kind of stuff, that's that's to be expected, right? And, and the and thing we, is, the thing is with a lot of it, and the thing is these are, these are businesses. And, and so they're not, the people who organ, the, are in charge of these organizations, they're not stupid people. Mm. They're not, none of them are stupid people. They're actually quite intelligent people. If you can go ahead and start a festival, you actually ha you have to have not only a knowledge of business, a knowledge of culture, but you have to know people. Mm. And, the, and the fact that you've gone ahead and said, hey, I'm gonna put a black square and then have a statement saying, you know, we support black lives, but then not do more on the back end, mm. it, 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 it further exacerbates the disingenuousness. Yeah, it's, it's like a slap again, in the face. It, that's exactly my point. Because again, if, in order to have a successful festival, you have to not only know people, but know what people want. And, and on the flip side, you have to know what people don't know what they want and give it to them so they eventually mm -hmm. want it anyway. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's kind of the art of being a DJ. You have to go ahead and give them something that they're not ready for, but they end up saying, wow, okay, I wasn't ready for that, but I like that. Yeah, but you see it all the time at festivals, two people you've never heard of and they blow your mind. So yeah. the fact that these festivals aren't going, reaching out to people, to, to, to BIPOC folks and saying, hey, you know what? Look, how can we do better? How can we be more involved? Yeah. And at the same time, not make it feel as if they're doing it as a token gesture to BIPOC folks. Yeah. That, that's, that's a very, it's, it, it's a problem that I don't know how some yeah. of these festivals are going to deal with. Let, let but me, and I think they need to they at least try to start reaching out because if yeah. they don't start reaching out, there's going to be some people that are just like, you know what, fuck it. I don't want to be involved. Yeah. In for one, I don't think they're going to survive. Sorry, I don't think um, they're, they're going to survive. Like the, the, the companies who are just putting up the black squares and this and that and not doing anything after. We live in this era where these people are calling out everybody on Instagram. Everybody, whether you're the president, whether you're whoever, everybody gets called out. So these, especially right now when it's, when it's pressure and it's, and it's heat in terms of doing the right thing in terms of equality and everything. These people who are just putting up the, the black squares or whatever, they won't survive because people are going to call them out. What's going to happen is all these people who are doing what's called, they have to find a way to, if, and if you don't put up the black square, cool, right? You're still standing, you're cool, it doesn't matter. But if you do put up and you do put up a statement or whatever, people are going to call you out. And if you mm -hmm. don't, what's it called? You will get exposed and you will lose stock, especially when you can't make your money back in shows and whatever, you will lose stock. What's going to happen is these guys have to find a way to get on the ground and do, um, do that grassroots marketing, do groundwork. And you don't need to go on Instagram or whatever to do all of that stuff, man. Go to, just go to one neighborhood community center and say, what do you guys need? And they will tell you everything they need. You don't need to do a whole meeting or nothing. You can go down to the Yellowbird Community Center and say, hey, what does your community need? They say, hey, by the way, the kids need this. The kids need this. They need this. Easy as that, right? It, you, it, you, it, you can to... summarize all of that in one word, outreach. That's outreach. it, right? And if, That's and it. For the same outreach that you had to go ahead and get people to go to your festivals, exactly. it's the same sort of outreach that you can exactly. do in communities. The it's thing the is, it's, got a street it's keep team. the same energy. Keep the, it's, it's keep keep the same the, energy. The, the, the model of 2020 and 2021 has been keep the same energy. Because if your energy is not the same, people are going to call you out. Trump kept the same energy all <laughs> his whole thing, right? Trump kept the same energy all this. It's keep the same energy. If you're going to be, yeah, if you're right. going to rap, cool. <laughs> rap and keep it to the end. If you're not, cool. I ain't going to be mad at you if you don't put the black square up. All good. Handle your business. But if you do, I'm going to ask you, how come you didn't do this? How come, hey, I was at that march. How come you wasn't there? You in the city. I saw you on Instagram um, at the club. How come you couldn't pull up for an hour? You know, and it's not just on businesses, but on our people too. Our friends. Our, 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 yeah, on, on our friends, not just yeah. the, the, the on, on our people, our friends who are whatever race they are, whatever, you know, who are showing support. This is not okay, bet, but I was just at the march calling you, yo, pull up with me. This is not, you know, it's them too, you know, it's not just it's, hey, just keep the same energy, you know? You have to stand by more and you have to stand behind whatever you, you put out there. If you're going to say, yo, I believe in equality, then stand behind it, you know? Stand behind it and stand strong, stand your ground the same way I have to stand my ground when I'm out here. When I'm out here and they call me a nigger, whatever, I have to say, I can't hide from that. I can't say I'm not this. I have to say either hide and run or say, no, you're not going to call me that, you know? 
So if you want to really stand behind this, then you got to put yourself out there and 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 be ready, to, willing to take the all the negativity that I take when I put myself out there and I stand my ground. Mm. If you're gonna stand beside me, stand beside me. Don't stand behind me when the pressure comes on. You can stand behind and then come back <laughs> after and be like, "Yo, you all right, bro? I just yeah. saw what happened. You good? Nah, bro. You supposed to be standing with me. You, you know, know what? It's, 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 whoever it's, it's, you are. You know, it's a one. It, 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 there's a line from the movie House Party where. Um, I forget which one, I forget if it was kid or play, where he's like, hey, I got your back. And he's like, way back. You know? Exactly, exactly. And that's exactly. kind of what we're dealing with right now. Exactly. They got your back, but it's way, exactly. way, way back. Exactly, mm. it's, it's put yourself out now. there. When I'm putting myself out there, I can lose, I can lose my life. I can lose uh, my, my, my um, I, I can lose my, um, my, my performance here. I can lose my um, people giving me money. I can lose all of that by standing up. Colin Kaepernick lost his whole job. You know, so when you do stand up and whatever it is you're standing up for, whether it's equality, whether it's animal rights, whatever it is, when you're standing up for something that other people are making billions off of, they're going to do everything they can to beat you to the ground to make you give up. And if the people around you are watching you get beaten to the ground and they say, shit, I don't want none of that. Walk away, <laughs> right? Why weren't you, you know, you should have stood with me, bro. You, yeah. Maybe we could have took him. Maybe if we both got up, maybe we could have took him. It was only one of them. You know, shit, maybe you could have got his legs, I could have got his, you know, his head. But you walked away on me, you know, because you were fake, you know, like you didn't, if, if you can't stand behind, you know, what else are you not going to stand behind? You know, are you going to stand behind your kids when they're born, right? Are you going to stand behind your wife? Are you going to, you know, what else are you not going to stand behind? It, as, as it comes down basically to just, are you honorable? You know, are you an honorable person? You know, it doesn't matter whether it's about race, whatever, are you an honorable person? Can you say something and mean it? Are you impeccable with mm -hmm. your word? Are you, um... You know, are you just a, 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 a real genuine person? And if you're not, it shows. If you're not a genuine company, it shows. And people see that and they will eat you up on Instagram. To the, point you want to, to the point you want to delete your account <laughs> for about a week and a half and then come back like, yo, I was going through mental health. Nigga, shut up, bro. You go just, off, son. Like, yo, go yeah. off, son. Go yeah, off, man, son. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, man. Like, if you're going to stand, you're going to stand with me. Stand with me when I get beat up, too, and then we can get up. I'll pick you up while you pick me up. Right, rather than you coming up, you got no boost, and you, hey, you good? No, I'm not good. Get off me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm not good. Add something in there real quick, just it, because yeah. I was having a conversation with my friend Sterling Scott. He's a comedian out of Edmonton, uh, and shout out to Sterling. Know, I know that boy. Uh, to Sterling, yeah, he's, he's Sterling. Uh, I mean, I, I think the whole idea behind all of that is that I mean, within all of our activism work, within you know just creating those equitable and uh, the equitable spaces where there's equality as well is, you know, unfortunately black people cannot do that alone and we need the allies. Mm, without, yeah. I mean, we'll never, we can never just, we could just never just roll up to one of these festivals. I mean, we've tried, I know I have. Yeah. Um, and yeah. be like, hey, I'm willing to help and put in this time for you. You know, it, most of the time it's not going to work. They need to somehow reach out to you, or you have to have those yeah. allies as well to, yeah. to to stand up. And I mean, Sterling Scott had uh, shared a story that is a perfect example of how allies can just show up. And you know, he he was uh, playing in one of the or playing he was performing in one of the the large comedy clubs there, and um, you know, his his skit included his experience as a black man and the Black Lives Matter movement. And of, of course, as Sterling Scott does, he killed the set, everybody loved it, nobody had a bad time. And he got off stage and the owner of the club said, I didn't bring you here to talk about black lives or I didn't bring you here to talk about this. And to him right away, he's like, well, then I ain't gonna do this. Boy, if you don't <laughs> yeah. like, kind of censor a comedian. Yeah, come on like, now. <laughs> yeah. What? This is you not know, the age. You no, know, he leaves. But then, you know, all of his friends who were also performers, that was their opportunity to be able to say, no, we ain't down with that either. And yeah. everybody walk away because without them, you don't have a club. But because exactly. everybody still wanted to worry about their own, do their own thing, nobody said mm -hmm. shit. And they kept going yeah. back to perform while Sterling yeah. is just like having exactly. to fight for his own stuff. So that's when mm -hmm. allies need to really, I mean, allies need to step in at all point. And Can you I know, give you... After, after, sorry, after one, one example of allies, continue. Yeah, no, it's just, uh, I was just going to say, even, you know, learning about some stuff, the, the word ally alone, like, just doesn't even fully sit well with me anymore, because mm -hmm. it, it has become like this, the, this kind of trophy, like, I'm an ally now, you yeah, know, what I'm good. doing, and it's like, yeah, that's, that's cool, thank you for doing that, but also, mm -hmm. 
you're if you're a decent human being, doing these things should just come naturally because we just yeah. have to out the one. Have anyway. to thank you for doing yeah. something. Yeah. Thank you so naturally. much for caring about my life. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's this... like it's exactly like the person saying, "I'm not racist," but you know what I mean. Like if you if you are an <laughs> if you are a true ally, you don't need to say, "I'm an ally." We already know. We see you. Yeah. And not only Benny. we see you, we see your actions. You know. Yeah. We Benny, see your you have actions. Stuff to add up in there. Oh, I have I so much to add. I think I think um, I think there's a couple different things going on here, and I think on um, the one front we have to look at those bigger institutions. You guys named Base Coast, but we're just speaking arbitrarily. I don't want to say that it's just Base Coast because yes, we don't no. actually we don't actually don't know what's going on behind the scenes. For all we know, they could be talking to Donna the whole way through, and she could be guiding them through their next phase of stuff. I'm just saying, like from a standpoint of these bigger institutions that are pillaging all of black music and don't have any black people representing the creation of these events moving forward. Um, we, have to, we have to decide one of two things, whether we're gonna continue to support them and put fire under their ass or we create our own stuff, right? Those are the two things, those are the two options, right? You can sit there and bang on the door and ask and beg someone to change something for you so that you can enjoy. But they could look at it and be like, that's not our audience anyways. Like our, our audience is only, you know, 3% black. So we're not really going to change anything that we do for them. And you can look at it that way and say like, okay, if we're not that important to you, take your money away from it or still try to force their hand and make sure that they are doing what they said that they were going to do when they put up their black square or they put up their message for the culture or whatever. Or again, it is about supporting the other institutions and creating something different, right? There is ultimately that option. And sometimes we feel like we don't have that option, but we definitely have to look at what that option even really truly looks like because we do just allow other people to create stuff because we know how hard it is to do. We know how difficult and how much money is required to do those things. Or maybe our passion is not really necessarily in, you know, taking on the full responsibility of a full four day festival. But at the same time, it's like, there's only so much you can beg or ask somebody who runs a private, you know, business to change their ways to, to have decency and human decency, you know what I mean? And we have to, to look at that and, and be very careful about, you know, begging for action in certain ways and just take your business elsewhere. Mm. And I worry about that sometimes too, because that's always something that's in the back of my head it, is exactly that, the two choices, you know, we how long do we spend begging people to just do the right thing before we just leave and create our own spaces and then it's like almost bringing that I don't want to necessarily use this word but this is the one that's coming to head but it's bringing that segregation back in a way where we have to have two separate things but I also feel you want to get on that talk right now real quick yeah okay (laughs) so it's actually not right quick. it's actually kind of long so yeah yeah yeah. well I'd be down for that but I also feel where we're at is that everyone would just leave those areas and come over to ours anyway because I mean again it it, this is where that culture is born and it just Mm -hmm. feels right you know Mm, and and I mean someone like me who is also heavily involved in you know rock and metal and very much sometimes being the only black person at the festival or in at the show and it's like how would I even create those spaces for myself or for people who look like me because even though there's a very small number of us we still need to be welcomed into these spaces so it's like Mm. you know how 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 much can you do in those areas and I mean Angela uh, that's where we know each other very well is from these spaces. So, and, and she has seen what, you know, a lot of these organizers and, and, and promoters have been doing. And it's like, you know, you, it, even just the simple act they, they had put a post up recently at one of these festivals. And I, I feel like I'm just calling people out today. That's where we're at. I'm sorry. Um, they put a post up and this guy comes in there literally, you know, wearing a Nazi supporting shirt and just like, just talking some shit. And instead of addressing the matter as a community leader should do, just quietly deletes the comment like it never happened, moves on. (laughs) They knew I was up in those comments. They don't reach out to me. (laughs) I literally sat at their dinner table. Like we are not just some strangers. So Mm. there's a lot of actions where, and I understand things are uncomfortable, but it's like, we have been uncomfortable for so damn long that we need other people to step into these spaces too. And, and I feel like we just, just like a post yeah. that was just like about rock music. It was oh, yeah, you were there. Support you said- of Black Shirt Day. And that mm. guy purposely oh, went on right. there with his little Nazi 
shirt and like tried to stir the pot. Yeah. No reaction. We do need to stand up against that sort of stuff and say it's not okay to be like that because if Mm. we're not talking about that, then they're just going to keep going. And being neutral is not an option. There's no, no, there's no such thing as being neutral. And that's the thing is if we ignore it now, when we, when we can go to these events in 2022, and this is half the reason I don't want to go into these spaces, because when you're not calling it out, that means next time I go to a show, now I'm shoulder to shoulder with this asshole. And what's going to, what are you all going to do about it when I'm, when it's in person, you know, and, and that's. And be like, yo, what happened to you? (laughs) (laughs) That's what's going on. I'm not, I just, you know, and that's another thing, you know, I think about a lot too, is when, when you're at a festival for, for days on end, and sometimes, you know, you're doing some sketchy things. Sometimes you're in sketchy situations. And the whole point, I shouldn't say the whole point, the whole idea though, of what festivals are supposed to be like, are that community and looking out Mm -hmm. for one another and knowing that I've been in some of these really sketchy situations with people who probably would not have done and yeah you can't even stand out here for black lives right now i would hate to have seen what you have done if something like hit the fan back then mm-hmm. and if i'm in spaces where i know people don't truly respect me and it, yeah. it, it's just like so many things you start thinking about mm-hmm. um but with that also i feel like it, I, I don't know if I, if I would just blame them in that because people are scared right there's fear in this life right there can be somebody who fully stands, he can be black and fully stands up, but if he sees me getting beat up or whatever, right? People don't want to get hurt. Like it's not even like on the funny shit, just fear takes over, right? Like I can want to do the right thing so hard, but fear has me frozen. You know, there can be, and that's why it comes down to really like, for example, if I'm going to a festival and I know these people don't really like, don't really like my kind, you know, I'm not going to go to the middle of it by myself. You know, I might have four or five of my friends with you know, just, <laughs> just just to not put myself in any situation. Just like if I got beef on whatever side of the world's card, I'm just going to go over there and just dance in the middle of it when I know these guys got problems with me, you know? So it's just, I'm not going to put myself in those situations. And then two, like, it is what it is, but I can't, um, it, it's hard for me to be mad, especially if it's like crazy things going on around, you know? It's hard for me to be mad at that person for not jumping in when there's like pepper spray and knives being pulled out, you know, mm. like yeah, a lot of times that's like, yeah, so that's like yeah, fight, yeah. fight or freeze. And... Fight, fight or flight. Exactly. And I can't, some people will fight. Some people will freeze when fucking the car backfires, you know, and like the freeze in the moment kind yeah, of thing. So sure. it's not really, I can't really blame them and I can't really be like, yo man, you have no heart, man. You, you're not really bought this. No, it's really like fear hits, man. There's, some, I mean, everybody gets fear. There's something that might hit me and I might freeze up on you. Like, yo, Eric, I thought you were real. When nah, bro, I, I, I ain't that real. You know, I ain't that real. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, um, we also have to just understand the world we are living in and be able to maneuver, right? Whether you're black or white, we live in a world where there are people in this world who are fucking evil, you know? Who are not necessarily evil, but mischief, people who rape babies, right? People who will break into your house, you know, this and that. There, there are, the, the world is treacherous, you know? And then especially when you're somebody of color, you have to learn how to move in these treacherous, you know, in this treacherous life, a certain way kind of thing, you know? And it's just like somebody who, for example, I always bring up somebody who knows people wanted to kill him on the street, right? He's not just going to be walking inside McDonald's every day saying, what's up, you know? He's going to be moving a certain way, you know? And we don't have to necessarily move that to that extent, but we also have to be aware that, hey, you know, people like me, but also there's people on the low who don't like me. People who will follow me home on the low. And what's called, and if I'm in a circle around people who, hey, I really don't feel, you know, it's just, we also have to take in consideration that, hey, the consideration, the, the positions we are putting ourselves in because, hey, people don't like, whether you're white or black, there's somebody who might not like you. Somebody might just have a, had a mother a bad day and he don't like them red shoes you got on today. You know, and you gotta, you know, be able to assess situations, see this, oh, you know what? The way this guy's been looking at me since I got off this train has been funny. I'm gonna get back on this train and get off the next stop or whatever the case might be. The way these guys have been looking at me dancing in the middle of this, you know, what's it called? They just been, hey, hey, um, um, Emily, let, let's go. Let's get out of here real quick. <laughs> I, I, I said, let's go over there, you know, or whatever it is, you know, like. Is that her, is that her name, bro, or what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. 
<laughs> you know, it's, we, are, we also have to be aware of ourselves, you know, because people, we can't put ourselves in people. Somebody might be like, yo, I'm here with you, but when things go, you know, that fight or flight kicks in and things even go down, they, you better have somebody else. <laughs> yeah, and and, 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 and and even in his heart, he might be like, move, yo, move, go help him, go help him, go help him, but he can't move, right? He's just, he, he, he's, he's frozen by the fear. He's like, no, stop, your friend's gonna go, go help him, go, but he can't move, you know? And That's it's not that he doesn't want to help. It's not that he doesn't believe in everything. He just doesn't know what to do, you know? Well, we watched that yeah. happen with George Floyd last year, so. A exactly. Example. Exactly, exactly, you know? It's hard, I mean, it's, this is really hard, especially when it's life or death, you know, like those people who run into burning buildings, those people who like stop active shooters, like those, those are not regular people, you know, <laughs> a regular person doesn't do that, right? A regular person protects his life. I got kids at home who need me tomorrow, you know, so let me go save my, a regular person doesn't do that. It takes a whole different other person and a whole different, you know, sometimes it's in that moment. And then you ask him the next day, he's like, man, I don't even know why I did that shit, bro. Like, I don't even know <laughs> yeah. why I did that. It's just the moment when the thing hits, it's fight, flight, and your body, your what's called just reacts, period, you know? So it's yeah. like those people who do jump in and save people from dying, whatever, bro. 90% of people don't do that, you know? That's not a regular human thing. The regular yeah. human thing is to protect yourself. The regular human thing is, 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 is self-preservation. You know, that's that's human nature. So to go above and beyond human nature and not and to preserve some that's like that's those are the people, the people who, who is there getting beat up with you and then in the jail cell with you, like yeah, what are we gonna do? Those are the people who's like, okay, you know what? Like you have a certain level of, you know, honor in you. I like the word honor, you know, there's a certain level of honor in you that, you know, you put yourself, but if you say something, you stand behind it, you're impeccable. You know, there's a certain level. People aren't like that. The regular press is not like that. People can talk a mean game, but when shit goes down, you say, yo, hey, hey, yo, you know, you don't even see them, you know, people talk a mean game. So at the same time, that's why I can't always be mad at people when yeah. I'm in that crazy yeah. pressure situation. I'm like, man, you ain't even do do nothing, you know? It's like, yo, that's at the end of the you day. you surround yourself with we people. <laughs> exactly, exactly, you know? You, you, you surround yourself with the people who you can trust, you know? And I mean, the social media game, the social media era where, you know, you, you, your heart knows who to trust, but, you know, everything just confuses everything. You know, all the stuff coming in confuses everything. Um, I have this thing that I believe that we, we're kind of illiterate right now, right? Mm -hmm. Illiterate in terms of reading media, right? We can read books, we can read whatever, but reading media, it's, it's a skill, right? You have to understand that. It's kind of like how debating. We can debate two different things, but if I'm a better debater than you, even if I'm wrong, I, will, I can be right in the debate because I, I, the, way I, I, the way I articulate myself, the way I bring in these certain facts, you brought no facts. Even though you're right, you brought no facts, <laughs> but I can bring in this fact here and make it and spin it to a certain way to match my argument, right? That's all media is. That's all news is, right? And right now we're in a state of like, we're illiterate. We don't know how to read it, right? In the beginning, when media first came, and in the first came, it was a one way. Hey, the sky is blue. You read it, bet. Sky is blue. You know, now niggas can put up shit that says the sky is red and then put up a whole Reddit post about why the sky is actually red, this and that, why the world is actually flat, give up all these facts and everything. And you'll believe it because you're thinking one way interactions. But we have to, like, over time, we will hopefully. Otherwise, we'll continue fighting over the same shit, fighting over the same, we're both on the same side, but we're arguing still, why? Because the two different news outlets that told us the same shit, mm. right? And these two do, news that I told us the same exact shit, but now we're still fighting over, it, you know? The, the, the whole divide and conquer, you know? They do that for a reason, you know? Mm. And we have to find out how to read news, find out that, yeah, when people read news, they say, it's just like when you get it from your close friend who you can trust and never lie. Oh, bet that's true. Now people go on CNN or Fox News, especially these older dudes, Trump or whoever, the older dudes don't really know how to deal with it. Oh, man, that's just like the president saying to himself, rig, rig, bam. I don't got to do no more research behind it. I don't have to go do my due diligence because, you know, this person I trust, you know, once we learn how to read media, we can take in information and realize, hey, who, who does this information come from? Okay, what could be missing from it? And then we can go and do our own research and then be like, yo, by the way, 
this is missing. You didn't bring up this when you said this. You didn't bring up this fact. You didn't bring up that that fact that you brought up is also been proven wrong already, you know, but you're put, bringing the audience just to prove your point. Kind of I don't thing. think so I feel like right now what you literate. Well, social media is even a thing. I think we're so far past that with social media. Uh, yeah. I don't even see it being possible for those conversations to happen uh, yeah. in this moment. I, 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 and it won't happen it's in this so moment. It's so off topic now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. off topic. We see, but we do. Let's, like, let's get you back know, on topic. Let's get back yeah, on topic. Let's get back but on no, topic. No, no, no. It's, it's a good conversation to have because I mean, it, 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 it's. Uh, misinformation campaigns and propaganda is what is, is helping us get into this weird, crazy situation that we are finding ourselves in. Um, it, it's just different than what it has been. Um, yeah. And I mean, that's why, I mean, leading back into representation, that's why it's so important to have those, the, the, those, those leaders, those indigenous leaders those black leaders the ones out there to help change that narrative a little bit um and i'm really happy to hear you know benny you creating or you being a part of this new team what was it called again advance advanced music so if you guys just type in google advanced music it's a page right now but uh, a lot of the stuff is actually happening behind the scenes so even just like providing more opportunities more job postings that are happening in different cities within the industry which is again another way for people to get involved to say like okay well there's a marketing job at warner music right now and they're looking specifically for somebody a, a person of color right so those are some of the mini initiatives that are trying to span to the other cities as well so it helps it definitely helps because those are the organizations that are looking to make those changes and looking to to do what's next in the proactive way right being and having that outreach so us being that kind of source for them at least as an idea and a concept is already a good thing to get off the ground but it's still going to be a lot of work like we have to infuse what our full mandate rollout is going to be per city and how we're going to actually implement a lot of the stuff but yeah that's 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 part of the start and I know a lot of different companies that after I had another talk about the industry uh, in general and if, what, kind of, what kind of representation there was, I had some guys who'd be like, yo, but Benny, like, you know, I send out resumes all the time or we put job posts all the time and no black people show up. And I said, well, bro, if uh, I come up to your bar and you don't let me in and you don't let my friends in, why would we apply for a job here? Right. <laughs> So you have to proactively go out there and say, okay, we are looking for someone that looks like you. And we want to make sure that people that look like you get into this bar. We want to make sure you feel good when you go order a drink so that maybe you'll want to work here and, and be part of this team. Not like, no, nah, I'm not going to get you a drink till I serve everybody else and then treat you like shit and so on, etc. Right. So it starts at the top. It starts from within those companies and it goes outwards, but Again, advanced music is going to help, at least from the music industry standpoint, but that's not going to be able to hold everybody accountable. And to go back to what Eric was saying, because Eric, you said a lot. You said a lot, Dawson. <laughs> Let me try to just like take a couple of the pieces, though. Yeah. Ultimately, like everything that we're fighting against right now in this conversation is that we can't change everything in one generation. It's just going to be that simple. This is programming, y'all. This is programming that has been set in motion since our great, great grandparents. So people are having microaggressions towards us and they don't even realize that they're microaggressions. They're just like, oh, but I I call everybody Choco Baby. (laughs) Yeah, fam, listen, that's not going to slide, all right? But at the same time, like they think that it's a good thing to go ahead and do. And it's going to take a combination of education from our stand, our perspectives, and all of our perspectives are actually different, very, very different, and educating people that they are very, very different perspectives. And then, you know, still allowing a proactive energy, uh, just like Eric says, man, just like kind of being and having that courage about it to say those things. And yeah, not all the time people are going to be in your corner and fight those battles with you, but you have to be willing to be, you know, a pioneer of sorts to make those conversations happen because at least now people are aware that the conversation is happening and then that moment they can choose to be like oh well i didn't know it's like bro you did know it's all over social media and i caught <laughs> you and i'm posting this shit so good luck right so it's gonna be this like multi-pronged thing but we have to be patient is kind of what i'm getting at and, and know that it's not going to change overnight it's not going to be that next job it's not going to be the festival 2022 where mm-hmm. there's a tons of black staff like we have to be <laughs> aware that it's going to take some time for people to even realize. Cause right now, if, if anyone in the industry is even watching, they're going to be like, Oh man, we love black people, <laughs> and, but, but they look beside them. I, and they're I not have working black with anybody. friends. Exactly. Right. I have black friends, but yeah, is your, is your black friend a lighting tech? Mm. Is your, is your, is your, is your, ba- is your black friend running back a house? Uh, is or, he running 
Oh, or are you paying them or are they all volunteering here with one extra ticket? Exactly. Oh, there's Charlie. He, he runs security. Uh, he, he does the, you know what I mean? Like there's no representation whatsoever. So it's going to take time. And um, we just have to be patient in that, but also be very steadfast with when we see shit, call it out. Period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. I'm curious um, how, what is, what is your background? Like what, what, what were you doing before the whole 10 at 10 thing? Huh, me? <laughs> yeah, you. I'm, I'm I am a... How that experience was. Um, my short-lived athlete that wasn't able to do post-secondary uh, athletics because of injuries, but I was always an artist. So I was a rap artist back when I was like 11, 12, 13. And that's kind of what sent me and brought me to Calgary. I was doing... We had this like mini tour with Swollen Members. So early 2000s, Swollen Members was all over Canadian hip hop yeah. and music and stuff. So we did a mini tour with them, me and my partner in rhyme, which is, uh, his name is Half Cut. And we were doing some shows and their manager was just like, hey, you guys are phenomenal. You should pursue this thing full time. Like uh, Calgary's got a budding scene. And we were like, oh, word? So we moved <laughs> to Calgary and oh man, he lied, he lied to my he face. Lied to you. He lied to my face. So anyways, um, the whole thing for me was like, how do I pursue music in Canada as, you know, as an artist? And when you say, yeah, I'm an artist, I'm a rapper from Calgary, Alberta, Canada <laughs> before Drake, good luck. <laughs> so my whole thing was like, how do I convert, you know, my songs into getting people to hear it? So the natural thing was like, let me uh, learn how to do better marketing and, and do graphic design and stuff. And I was always doing design as like a, as a youth. So I went to school for graphic design and that sent me down the path of like learning how to market yourself at least as an artist and market yourself and create your own graphic and your own cover work and do that because that stuff wasn't here people couldn't do that so naturally man's like my whole thing was about representation like how do i represent rappers so that they don't look mm-hmm. like you know they're outliers or that they look actually professional or they don't seem like they're from calgary alberta <laughs> how do you make them actually look you know bigger than life so that was kind of my genesis into just even trying to change the dialogue and the conversation behind being a rapper from Canada, let alone from Calgary. And then that stemmed into helping events like Africa Day and then creating my own Black History Month event because obviously, again, no representation moved to Calgary. They got a big hip hop scene and what's going on. And, you know, naturally you want to find people that look like you and you want to celebrate Black culture and there's nothing happening. So Black History Month came and uh, me and a few friends at the time, we decided to create this amazing celebration of Black culture uh, at the UFC. Um, and mm. yeah, it was just a really, really cool thing to kind of set the whole thing in motion as, as far as my events management journey. And yeah, we brought together like 30 artists between African, Afro-inspired, Caribbean dance, DJing, capoeira, break dancing, a whole bunch of different things. And it was it was such a big big moment for not only the school but like just the city as a whole to be like yo there was a big celebration of black history and it came from a kid who's not even from here and this that whatever and we continue to do that for three more years and then you know like all things arts (laughs) you lose money and when you lose enough money you're just like you know (laughs) let's take a break Uh, my partner she moved to Toronto so then that kind of like just deaded but then um, a couple years later, and some other opportunities happened, and then again started with, with um, an award ceremony show that, and now I was like, how do we represent black people and show and highlight black people in the community that are doing positive things, but maybe they're not necessarily like, you know, in in contention for the White Hat Awards. I don't know if you guys have heard of the White Hat Awards. So the White Hat Awards at the time didn't really have much representation and there was no one else really looking for the Black community uh, to give them any kind of recognition. So we created the Black Gold Awards. Now you can imagine what happens when you call something Black Gold Awards in Alberta. (laughs) And uh, if you guys think that racism is bad, you know, right now, or it was being outed right now, just imagine the comments. I'm like, what about the White Gold Awards? Oh, so you guys are being kind of racist, aren't you? It's just like, (laughs) fam, are you kidding me right now? But that level of like, just seeing people fight so hard to put you down or to push you down and so that no one can see any black representation was just really, really telling. And that was my early predecessor to like seeing and being kind of like primed for what, what just happened and what we're going through currently. But we ended up changing the name. The pressure was just so crazy and so big, even like, um, 
I don't want to say it's the reason, but like, I know that Nenshi didn't show up for the first, for the first year because it was just one of those things. Like we called it the black gold awards and everybody had these things. Whereas we're like, this is genius. Black gold, Alberta oil is considered black gold. And plus black people we're like gold <laughs> happiness for everybody. <laughs> what about the white gold awards? Oh, so, very, very tough and very difficult. And, and even for black people, Saying the word black in Alberta up until June 2020 mm. was like, shh, shh black, black, <laughs> black, black, right? Because people were very afraid to say, like, you know, what representation of black were they? Were they African? Were they Caribbean? Um, were they not even any of those? Were they Afro Canadian? Generations of Canadians who were black, right? So just even standing in front of the word black was very hard when we did the award show like you know we had a lot of contention as the board if we could do that or not and i was like yo we got to be black we got to just like stand in front of it you know favor fortunes the brave and everyone's like yeah i don't know that is so that was their fight or flight they were like no i'm I'm with it i'm about it but i ain't about this right now exactly they disappeared on you exactly right (laughs) so it was tough it was tough to kind of like go through all that contention to just be yourself and to highlight your people like to be like yo there's people like me out here like trying to make shit happen and they're not being recognized for anything there's like there's this mom in northeast that had, runs a grocery store she's got like another franchise brand and she, she helps the entire community and no one even knows her name outside of that community like people need to be highlighted in this kind of way so it was very like you know, very daunting and very tough to to see. But anyways, I did that for three years and that was amazing. It was a big positive thing for the community. But again, you know, our community as 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 some are aware, you know, very, it struggles to support um, each other and they don't sometimes understand the bigger picture of things until it's gone. And then they're wondering like, how come nobody's here to represent? us and this that whatever so it's very difficult sometimes to push things forward because not everyone is on the same boat or understands everything at the same time and for people who've been fighting for for black rights or people of color's rights in general who've been fighting for years they're almost like jaded that somebody right now wants to like start fighting and they're only been doing it for two months they're like oh you've only been doing it for two months i've been fighting for 20 years it's like yeah i figured you need some help but like isn't that a good thing yeah no i want to get i want to get the money for it it's just like fat like we're supposed to be on the same team right now I'm like we're, i thought we're all fighting oh we are oh we are just not <laughs> just not you <laughs> so it's interesting watching what we do to ourselves sometimes too and again that's part of programming it's part of like you know people thinking that there's only one slot and there's only one 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 person that can do something and there's only one person that can be the voice of everybody so anyways, taking all of that and then understanding, okay, you know, the struggle for just blackness is, is so micro like supported that what's a better way of infusing that into the city and creating counterculture. So for me, it was hip hop. So that's why we are like, that's what we created 10 to 10 is the concept to create, you know, a sense of community and to have that like place where, yeah, yeah, we're going to highlight and support artistry and emerging artists, but we're certainly going to push hip hop culture and black culture into the city in a way that they don't even realize hip hop. It was so sneaky. And then bam, here we are. Hip hop. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we did what we could. And you know, while we were in an era of events, you know, I, I, I call that an era because I really struggle to think of the, the 500 willy nilly, not thinking about anything crowd. And I, I still think we're a few years away. So anyways, guys, sorry for that long explanation, but I do come from, you know, self-discovery as an artist and understanding that artistry and wanting to support other artists and be a platform to catapult other artists, meeting, marketing, and pushing counterculture into the city to make sure that everybody gets fair due for their own communities. That's where I come from. I love it. I love the story. And, and you can tell it's made it as far as it has because of all of that self-discovery along the way and finding what works and what doesn't and learning how to, you know, still have a voice while also taking other people's voices into considerations, even the voices who are not, a, are not about you, who, who do not want to support you. Yes. You still, it's like, you know, the, the pink flamingo thing when mm. all of that blasted, it's like, mm. 
You still could have been like, nah, we were given this wall. We're still going to paint it here. I don't care if all of you people hate it. You have to somehow, you know, work with the community you're in, even if those people don't want it, because it is those baby steps too. You know, they started, okay, we're going to put a mural over here in Chinatown. People will get warmed up to it. Maybe they'll like it a little bit more. Maybe then we'll move over here. It is those baby steps. It takes a lot. Of you believe they put a mural up in Chinatown? Bro, do you go to Chinatown? Do you care? Why do you care? Yeah, right? Fam, <laughs> what? Yeah. Trust. They'll find any any reason, right? So, but yeah, yeah. exactly. You got to just keep pushing, man. Keep pushing. pushing. And that's why it's so important for all of us, um, especially as racialized individuals, to continue supporting one another because it is such a long journey. And it, that's why it's so easy for people to just get exhausted you know for me I'm one of those people who are very new in this activism world and even with just a year in I feel it I'm exhausted I can tell now why people you know they push so hard and then it's like okay well I can't do anymore like I've put everything I can all of me into it I mean luckily I'm just a crazy person and I will probably go until I cannot walk anymore but that's right? also not healthy, you know. Yeah. Legit. <laughs> yeah, it ain't you can't, healthy. <laughs> you can't, you can't, uh, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? Yeah. And, but that's also like, a, oh. like even just like to give you props for how much you have been at the extreme forefront. I know when me and you talked prior to you even pushing things forward in the smaller communities, I was like, "Listen, Taylor, it's gonna be a long road. It's gonna be a long road. You really want to go do all this? It's perfectly fine if you do. I'm just saying." Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be tiring and it's one of those things where it's like you know doing uh, going through the experience i went through in 2008 9 and 10 it's just like it's so tough that anyone that's going to do that now let me do my best to push them forward and empower them but I, it's, it doesn't have to be me at the forefront i can help in other ways because again i've taken the brunt of the of that issue before so let's let some other people suffer some blunt trauma, <laughs> but let's help each other still. <laughs> you know, let's help each other still. You know, so it's yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy at yeah. all to to do those things and to to fight this journey, man. It's it's uh, it's also it, it's rewarding or fulfilling in its own way, but it's definitely you know daunting too when you look to your left and, and homie who you thought thought had your back doesn't have a word to say or you know or next dude who you thought was friends the whole time is the one even saying anything you're like fam are you kidding me right now mm. so it's definitely been its own interesting thing. I think that's definitely been the hardest part is um yeah looking around and realizing that the people that you thought were close to you or the people that you know really had your back or you know like you're like yeah I'm fighting this fight like I thought you were going to be by my side and you you're not, you're now not calling them. You're taking them off Facebook. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's been one of the hardest parts of it's of that the bad, and it? journey. It's not that bad. Like you, you, mm -hmm. you got it good. People like you. What do you mean, people like me, bro? Like, <laughs> it has nothing to do with it, right? So yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. So I mean, okay. Well, first, Joe, Joe, you've been quiet over here. You got anything to add into any mm -hmm. of all this? And then I just got a couple, you know, questions to ask. I feel that will still take us a bit, but before we close. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm um, I'm just sad. You sad? I'm just sad and just disappointed because um, there's a lot of people who you, know, you hang out with them, you spend time with them, you play sets with them, you eat food with them, you drink with them. They say, hey, you know what? You're great at what you do. You're awesome. You're the best. You're so talented. You're so amazing. And with everything that we've seen over the past year, especially this past summer, the same people that will tell you how wonderful you are when it benefits them ultimately have nothing to say when people who look like you are oppressed. And 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 that that's what's that and, and, and I've had I've, I've been I've been quiet for a while and I've just been thinking about this while listening to everybody speak and it's just like you know what this shit is fucking upsetting it's really fucking upsetting it's fucking disappointing and and it it, it, it gets me angry it really honestly does and you know there, there's. There are, there are days, and again, I, my turntables are still, all my stuff is still in Canada. All my equipment is still in Canada as a result of the move and not being able to get into Canada as a result of COVID-19. 
but there's there are days when I'm like, man, I can't wait to start playing shows again. And then there are days like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to do this shit anymore. Simply because I just I I, I just well it, I, when I say that, I say that with the caveat of I just don't want to be in spaces with people that have smiled in my face and patted me on my back and slapped and tapped and dapped me up and everything else. But yeah. then when the moment comes to actually not just slap and tap, but actually walk and hold hands together, they're nowhere to be seen and nowhere to be heard from and nowhere to be found. And even if, even if this fight for representation or, or, or Black lives truly mattering, even if this isn't your fight, just from, just from a decency perspective, you should be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this. But even if that decency isn't a part of your, who you are, isn't a part of your system, isn't a part of your being, just from pure business sense, it would be, it's, 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 just, it's just good business sense to be inclusive. It's good business it makes sense. sense. Inclusive, yeah. Right? But e- e- even if you're just, you know, just a cold hearted capitalist and you don't care about people's lives, you just care about money. It's just from a business sense, it's just common business practice, a good common best practice to be, to have diversity and inclusion as part of your business model. But if you're not even willing to invest in that, then I'm not necessarily sure that investing my time and talent in organizations that aren't willing to invest their, their energy into something bigger than themselves is even worth my time. And that's something that now, now that I've been, now that I haven't been playing, I haven't played a show in, you know, since March of last year. And, and again, as I, as I t- said this about an hour and a half ago, I feel most comfortable playing music quite honestly, outside of North America. Now, granted, there are certain exceptions within North America, but most of the time I feel, that's part of the reason why I travel so much when I've been to 40 other countries, because I actually enjoy playing stuff outside of the United States. And, and again, if, you know, and I said this in an interview with, um, with Pete, small town Pete, mm. I said this in an interview with him the other, a while back for his TV show. I was like, look, man, if I never play another show again, I'm okay. You know, I'm cool because I've, I've done a lot, a whole lot for a whole lot of people. And, and I guess my legacy is intact, so to speak. But, you know, what, what good is all of this if we're not going to stand up for something bigger than what we're doing now? What good is all of this is if, if we're not going, you know, my little, my little baby girl is sleeping right over here about 10 feet away from me. I'm at a point right now in my life where I want to do something that's far more, far bigger than me. I want to make sure that my little 10 year old baby girl has an opportunity to live out her dreams just as much as her father has been able to. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to make sure, and, and, and my little girl's biracial, you know, her mom's white and obviously I'm, I'm black. And Wait, I've had this conversation. <laughs> Wait, you black? Oh no. <laughs> amazing. I know. You know, and I've had these conversations with her. And I'm like, hey, you know what, baby? People are going to treat you differently because you look different than everybody else. And she's aware of that now. And there's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to look like her, who are going to be people of color, who are going to need people like us to tell them, hey, look, you are enough. You are, you, your life does matter. You, you have talent you are amazing and you can do anything just as much as anybody else can. And I think, I think now more than ever, we have to make sure that we're not only, that we're living some sort of lives that, are, that have some sort of meaning in them. And whatever that meaning is for each of you and anyone else that is watching this conversation right now, that is something for you to sit down and, and, and reckon with and deal with. Mm-hmm. But but Taylor, you asked me the question, and right now, the way I feel kind of about this whole music thing, I'm just like, you know what? <sighs> you know, there's got to be there's got to be more to this than just flinging dark plates, playing shows, and getting a few drink tickets and making some money. Mm. You know, 
there's got to be more to it than this because when I first started when I first started buying records my my whole thing was to just hey you know what I want to take this places I didn't even think I could imagine going and I've done that and I've done that but now even when I look back on all of this I'm thinking you know what shit I've been all these places done all this stuff and it's still not enough it's still not enough and, and that's something I've got to deal with and I got to figure out what else I can do so I feel satisfied about what I've what I'm doing with music and the arts there there has to be something more and I don't know if it's getting on more panel discussions with festivals and saying hey look white folks y'all need to be more inclusive because people like me don't always feel comfortable in places like festivals and some of you clubs you know I, I don't maybe that's it I don't know I'm, I'm actually now that I'm talking about this with everybody I'm actually going to be involved with um with a couple of with, with some of my friends who work at Ableton to try to figure out ways that Ableton can be more diverse and inclusive in their business practices and, and I'm being a part of those conversations we're going to schedule those are on the schedule sometime for next week or the week after that one of my very good friends works at Ableton and he's you know we, we had a, it was literally a conversation I was like yo what's what's happening what's this and he's like hey let's do this let's do this he got me on and a few other folks on and we're going to do something about it. So maybe, maybe my energy is best spent doing that stuff because, you know, Benny, the type of change that you talked about, it, it's, it's change that I know is not going to happen overnight, but it's change that is necessary. It's change that is going to take time. And it is the sort of change that, when my daughter, if my daughter ever decides to have kids, I don't want my daughter's kids to say, hey, you know what? I didn't get an opportunity to do this because there is a racist infrastructure that didn't allow me to express mm -hmm. myself. If, if my daughter has kids and her kids tell her that, I have failed. I have failed. And I wasn't fucking put on this earth to be a failure. Man, there, there's a few things to unpack there, for sure. And, and, and Taylor, you know there's always stuff to unpack when, I'm, when, when, when I do this. You <laughs> I know I love it. conversations with you. It's I love great. you too. And I mean, the first thing to address is that feeling of there's got to be more than this. And there's two, you know, things I think of is that one, I think that's something we all feel. And I think and that and it doesn't matter what color you are that is just the system of capitalism that has this feeling there's got to be more than just working a nine to five for minimum wage just working to pay bills and die like that is a whole system of capitalism that's another thing that is just another part of we, we, we don't got time for all that trust we that's, got a, that's time a for thing that. thing that's a we thing, got thing. Time for that. <laughs> yes that is a thing so and and the other part too is also that we we as, as black and indigenous racialized people we feel more exhausted because we have to put that extra amount of work in to be able to feel like we are living our, our fullest potential or living out our passion within these spaces like when you go to a festival or you talk to musicians that you know let's say non-black non-indigenous musicians let's just say white musicians mm -hmm. for the most part you know unless you've worked yourself to a point where your passion has become a job that you are sick of for the most part people are very happy because they're doing what they love and for a black man to be like you know doing what he loves and to be like there's got to be more than this there's a problem the man is living within his passion and he's still feeling like like there's still something just not right there. Taylor, I'm gonna say something that I hope everybody understands. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. White people have a job, black people have a responsibility. Mm. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that again, just make sure everybody heard what I just said. <laughs> White people have a job, black people have a responsibility. So when there's always this adage in the black community that you have to be twice as good just to be equal. Mm -hmm. You have to be twice as good. Part of that exhaustion that you spoke so eloquently about is the level of energy and effort to be twice as good just to get in those spaces. Yes. And, when, and again, if, if I get called a racist because, oh, you're only talking about black people, then so then, then it is what it is. But 
I know what it feels like to give everything when I'm performing. I know what that feels like because I know if I don't give everything and if I don't give my very best, I might not come back. And that level of energy, it comes from a place that's deep within that I don't necessarily see my white brothers and sisters having to dig deep in. Nah, there's DJs being called out for rape all the time and they're still getting booked for festivals. Like I don't, I, I don't see it happening. And the reason why I don't see it happening is because they know that eventually they're going to come back. They're going to mm -hmm. come back. They'll get another shot. At, they'll get another bite at the apple. Mm -hmm. When I pull up, I'm going to get one bite at that apple. Like, ah, I got to open up. <laughs> Straight up. No, because, because, Sorry. No, no, because, because again, if I, if, I, if I don't give my very best, there's a really good chance I won't get invited back. And if, and there might be somebody in the crowd who looks like me that might see me for the first time and say, shit, if Joe can do it, I can do it. I want to do what Joe did. Mm -hmm. And then if they come up to me and they say, hey, Joe, nice set, whatever. Um, I, want to, I want to do what you do. My response has always been the same. I said, look, don't be like me, be better than me. Mm -hmm. um, I, the other thing I just wanted to touch on too is you know, going back to that idea of, because you, you were bringing up so many points within, within that, Joe. And I, of course we all do on how just that support is lacking, whether it's from black people or white people. Um, and, you know, there is that, that there is the very realistic thing of, you know, the fight or flight where people, you know, will freeze up in certain situations, but let's not fool ourselves when we know there's a lot of people just not doing shit because it just doesn't affect them. Let's just put it or into it reality or it that that is the majority. Them. It bingo, is, bingo, people bingo, speak up bingo. When things benefit them. Exactly. <laughs> it is the benefit them. No, it is the majority that are just you know, white privilege is just benefiting them so much that it's like, why would I ruin everything I have? There's a pandemic, you know, I lost my job and I can't do this. I have mental illness. So do all of us. And we are still out here. And I don't want to, you know, call people out and be like, yo, if you are feeling super low because you got mental illness, you can't be out here. You have to be out here. I'm not saying that. It's that just recognize that we are human and people too, also dealing with all of those same struggles and we still have to be out here. And you know, it's it, the, it, the fact of the matter is the majority of people are not out here because of their fight or flight mode. It's that they just don't feel it necessary to be out here. They think just like every other civil rights movement, every other thing that eventually this is just gonna die down or something will happen, you know, oh, we defunded the police $10 million. We should just be happy, which didn't happen. But it happened by the way, yeah. They were like, nope. oh, by the way, no one's, no one's looking. Let's nope. yes. erase the whole thing. Yes, you know, if they gave us that money even, people would just expect us to be happy. Oh, you got what you wanted without seeing all of it. So, you know, white supremacy, it's a thing. White privilege, mm -hmm. it's a thing. And that is something definitely to acknowledge. Um, and then- or I'll back for a second, a big issue is they don't see Black people as jumping hurdles because there has been a Black president and Black people do have these big, mm -hmm. high, powerful jobs, but they're not seeing all the hurdles that they have to jump to get there. And it's a huge argument mm -hmm. with them. Like, they don't feel we are oppressed in that way. They feel that we have just as much opportunity. And if we choose not to take it, then that's our problem. And it's well, like- Well, let's talk about too, you know, it, well, let's not talk about it, talk about it, but you know how some, being a black woman from a from small town, Alberta, you know, the things that I said, the things that I allowed, the own, things within my own ideology on what I thought, because I didn't have black people around me. I was just taught what white people taught me about black people. Um, yeah. Think about yeah. You know, how even we can oppress our own people. The shit, some of the shit Obama did was not for black people. So when they see, or when we look at people like Candace Owens, they are not for black people. So they still see- this oh. the And power. they're the people they and always they bring up. Things. Well, I don't understand why, why is she black and she thinks this way? Mm. Like, yeah. oh my God. 
or the Hodge twins. Yeah. yeah. That's the first thing they'll bring up. That right. is the first, that is the first Every person time. they'll bring up. Well, and I, I put that, I put that in my message now. Show me, like, tell me where you got this from and do not bring up Candace Owens. Like that <laughs> yeah, will cut you off right there. Don't even bring her up. Yeah, there's, there's people, I mean, they, they, we've always had this, you know, if you want to use derogatory terms or not, and we call those people, they're, they're cooning or they're uncle toming, you know, for situations because they have their own personal benefit or gain from it. If they get a yeah. couple bucks to just say everything that black people have to say right now is hogwash, then they're going to do it because they got people buy that car and go buy that house and they're good and they, they can get taken care of versus knowing that this uphill battle of generational racism through capitalism is going to be so daunting that they don't want to go that way, that they'd rather just enjoy their 80 years and some money mm-hmm. this way, and then they'll do it and they'll sell themselves out for it. And that's what you see time and time again. So you have the Candace Owens and, and you have the Hodge twins and you have a whole list of other people who do that kind of stuff. But, yeah. you know, and then people will always, because it's the age of information, but it's also because it's the internet and everybody has a platform to speak. You're, just usually finding the stuff that sides with what, what you believe, like you said earlier, going in Reddit and the sky's red, so you want to make the sky red, and, and that's what it is. Like you you ain't know, like how can you even see that it's blue, dog? It's red. Like it's just it's just what's happening right now, right? So we just mm. need more more freedom, truth speakers, yeah. truth talkers, you know. And, and then on top of that, I think we also need to when we go back down to like supporting, like really supporting each other. For example. I know many artists who I can have a black um, uh, club and everything, but maybe they're just starting like a 10 at 10 and they can't offer me any money. Mm-hmm. Right. But then this person can give me 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm going to leave 10 at 10 and go for these guys because they're giving me some money kind of thing. Right. And even yo, these guys are just starting. Maybe you just, what's called you, you're helping build them up kind of thing. You're helping what's, you know, but even us as black, you know, sometimes we are going for money, we're going for whatever it is. Right. Even us, sometimes we need to, yeah, okay, bet this money here. But yeah, we need to sometimes also look at our people doing shit and say, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and throw them a, 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 a verse or throw them a, a, a hook, throw them, throw them a free show, you know? Of course, it's money, this and that, but it's the same way as what are you doing for your community, right? Are you buying Are you buying book bags for these guys? Okay, bet I'm about to do a free show for this, for this after school drive or whatever kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So also us, I feel like sometimes, especially we get to a point where we can have 30 people saying, yo, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And um, we will go for the people paying us kind of thing. Or, you know, because of course we all, everybody has their own struggles. You know, everybody needs you. I need that money tomorrow kind of thing. But then also we have to, we have to make a sacrifice too sometimes. You know, sometimes like, you know what? There's two shows this weekend, right? This one show is for this. I'm getting paid a hundred bucks, right? This one show is for 10 out of 10 or whatever the, uh, whatever it is. But these guys, or a show for, um, um, fight for equity or whatever it is, but I'm going to pull up and do my part. You know, the same way as you pull up and volunteer, same way as you pull up and go help out your mom's kind of thing. Sometimes you need to pull up for your community and help out, you know. A lot of, um, we all need money, but cool. But sometimes, man, give yourself one, one day a month that you're going to just pull up and go do something, you know, for free. Mm-hmm. That those same people who can do just as sick as a show as the people who are paying you, but because they can either only put the money in the show or the money in the artist, right? Go, go, go show some love to the, to the people who are showing you love as well, you know? That's so also as us- equity within our own communities because the only yes, people who exactly. this moment who are gonna build our equity mm-hmm. is us. And that's, exactly. and that's that mentality of thinking ahead rather yeah. than just the immediate. Um, and people don't even understand what equity is. You know, there's cash and there's equity, right? People don't have- understand the two differences. People don't understand that when I'm working with these guys, they're gonna give me cash. But when I'm working with these guys, they're going to give me equity, equity, right? Or, you know, like, for example, um, I think there was um, people who, like, for example, I think it was Al Gore who went and did, like, this one, they asked him to come and do this one um, presentation, you know? And he's like, don't pay me, just give me percentage, you know, equity, you know? And that equity <laughs> turned into, like, yeah, exactly. And they, they said, cool, because we're, we're starting up. We're starting up company and we want you, bam, we'll give you equity. The equity turned into, like, you know, 10 million, 100 million, or whatever the case might be. But he was willing to even... um to uh to cancel the pay and just take the equity you know but then at the same time when we're dealing with our community right yo you know what man fuck the pay you know because i know that in 10 years the the this what you guys are doing right here in 10 years you you guys might have 10 million followers this and that the equity is going to be built up on you guys and then 
because we were always showing each other love from the beginning and holding each other down. It ain't gonna be nothing for you to propose stuff. Yo, by the way, Eric, let's just drop something. You know, by the way, this now I'm not getting money, but you guys remember how we all helped each other up coming up. And it's nothing for you guys to post this up and it's nothing for me to post it up as well. You know, so sometimes we need to also get to that point that, yo, okay, there's five shows this month. I'm going to do one show for my community. You know, one show for my people, one show for my whatever it is. I'm going I'm, I'm to pull up to, to the block and just fucking do a show. I'm going to pull up to the block with a bunch of backpacks full of school supplies yeah. and just give them out just something a little something and then a free show after you know yeah it's good to create those boundaries i know i spent years just pulling up that was just the career was pulling up to help build that equity i think yeah. you know that's why i came into this already exhausted because for years my entire career all of my projects everything i've ever done was to help build community so when it, all of this happened and to see people just scatter and bail when it's like, isn't, you know, white folk like to throw around the world community all of the time. Isn't this what we're supposed to be doing? Like, mm -hmm. where is everybody? But I mean, that's, yeah, I, that's something I need to, and this will have to be another conversation in, in how, you know, pay, pay, pay black people, pay, you know, mm -hmm indigenous people pay your friends you know mm -hmm. and 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 help one another out and build that equity um mm -hmm. joe you had your hand up and i know you want to hear from julia and claire too before we go we're almost at two hours now so yeah that's yeah, why we've we, we, we been talking, we be talking a lot sorry yeah. guys <laughs> that, that's, that's good. Bad. you know that's that's why I'm, that's why i had my hand up because you know, if we're going to talk about diversity and inclusion we might as well ha include everybody and claire and julia yeah. have been here for the better part of almost two hours and we've heard 30 words between them. So I, I, I <laughs> would love to hear from each of them and I would, I'm sure the viewers- Oh, you put them on the watching. spot. You're gonna make yeah, them. Yeah, Julie. Yeah. Spot, spot, <laughs> <I'm a> spot, <laughs> spot. <laughs> Claire goes first. <laughs> yeah, no, lots of, lots of great things have been said and I've just been uh, kind of a fly on the wall tonight. Um, I think just something I want to add is that if if you are actively anti-racist, you are not going to be triggered by posts like Dear White People. You don't have to worry about that applying to you because you already know that you are doing the work Absolutely. and that, you know, it's not just a black square on your Instagram. We need people to show up and we need people to continuously show up. You have black people that are at risk of losing their lives here in Alberta. Black activists that have had their lives threatened. And where are the people? Mm -hmm. Like, that's where I'm at. <laughs> uh, it's good. And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely, I mean, as a lot of people following us know, we had a very eventful weekend. And I mean, not just an eventful weekend, it's been a very eventful last year, especially as all of us work within rural Alberta. Um, it's not rare where people are telling us we're gonna be found hanging in the trees or they're gonna come shoot us or run us over. This past weekend, Tierra and um, Tigra were literally followed for four hours out of a small town and almost ran off the road. So these are, the, these are situations, you know, and we do, volunteer all of our time for this to try and help bring education and bring people together, build community. Um, trust me, I would rather be doing other things than being told I'm gonna to be found hanging from a tree and have to put cameras up on my house. We would much rather be doing different things. There's a reason we're out here still having these conversations every day, um, bringing people together like this. And uh, it, I, yeah, Claire, I'm happy um you mm -hmm. added that in there because um you know for the white folks who get offended when even we say white folks you're not being anti-racist that's you're obviously not anti-racist because if you are it doesn't offend you because you understand the power uh the power structure that power struggle the, you understand white privilege and you know uh white supremacy these are these are real things so um anybody who is still listening right now thank you very much <laughs> For, for following along on the journey. Julia, you got anything to add as well before we go? Oh, I don't even know where to start. Like there's just like a <laughs> list going in my head. Like 
I'd like to do a specific call out to the metal and punk scene in Calgary. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? Like, yes. I was having a conversation in Red Deer <laughs> with another friend, of, like a mutual friend of Taylor's and mine, and he was saying like, for how much stuff Taylor has done for the music scene, it's absolutely disgusting. The amount of people that are just like, oh, she helped me in so many ways, but you know what? Nah. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. it's not, but so like, if you're watching, I see you mm. um, and I'm going to hopefully see you in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a lot of it too, right? Like a lot of us being, sorry to interject, we were trying to give you time and here I am talking again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but like when, it, when it's online sometimes too, it's easy to just like be out of sight, out of mind, right? People just don't log in, they don't turn it on. So I can't wait till like the function is live and it's open. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, so we had some talks last year, fam. Where's all, where's all the people of color in here? Where's all my staff, my peoples? Yo, yeah. there's no one in there. And then there's, mm. you can cause a little bit of a ruckus, but it's going to take that consistent work for sure. And, and seeing it live and direct and giving those people time to, to adjust accordingly. And, and hold them accountable. So thanks, Julia, yeah. for sharing that. Wait, yeah, can, and can we add one more thing? Yeah. I, say, I think I say it every single episode. Reverse racism <laughs> is not it a exist. thing. <laughs> Lord, Reverse racism mercy. is not a thing. No. We're not racist for coming to Grimshaw. And we're not racist for coming to Grimshaw. Oh God, for I really We're hope there's people now. watching from Grimshaw tonight. I, really hope not that, I, I hope not that realizing you either but y'all need to do better and the mm -hmm. fact that we were followed for four hours and there's nobody on any of these Grimshaw pages speaking out sharing it they're not saying a word but they're posting Grimshaw strong masks and you people masks. Uh, you people you people masks like yeah really That's what we're uh, yeah. but okay. they're not racist yeah, they seen. sure did a lot of defending for a not racist town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did a lot of racist things. A lot of justifying, town. a lot of it's a pillowcase, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. Look, here's another picture of him in a hood. <laughs> like, because well, that makes it any better. Uh, we might like, have, have a whole, uh, well, actually, I mean, Black History Month is coming up. We, I don't think we have our topics picked yet, but we should definitely have one um on you know the history of kkk within mm -hmm. alberta and canada as well as absolutely the accelerationism of hate groups so definitely explore mm -hmm. those again because i don't i mean i don't even want to say i don't, don't think people are getting it because people know I, it, so it's just and i don't know i feel like that's why you know a few of us are a little more um bitter or than most sometimes is because we deal people with aren't this getting it laughing of people of uh, uh that are just they don't want to change like it's having these events and conversations in calgary in the city compared to going to a town of 1200 and trying to have it's a different feeling it's a different thing and so um yeah a, another way for people to come out and to support is come out to these small communities uh and and can I say one thing too? Yeah, say all the things. People of color on your committee. Like I'm a part of multiple committees um, that are for diversity and inclusion and equity and you know multiculturalism and newcomers. And there is not one person of color. There's no representation. And that you that the, is what this pardon? You were the first. Yeah, I'm the first. Like, <laughs> and you know, it's like you can't. And then um, I think it was in a fight for equity. I can't remember what group. And somebody was like, so you're saying that if I had a university degree in black studies, I couldn't be on this panel as a white person? Well, that was person. the Grimshaw thing. Mm -hmm. Is it Grimshaw? Yeah. Um, you can be in it, but you can't be leading it. Those are two different things. Um, it needs to be for BIPOC by BIPOC. Um, and that's really important too. So when you say Taylor, people aren't getting it, it does some like, yeah, people aren't getting it because they feel like they can still hold, like white people can hold spaces for people of color. You know, like we need, to lead those yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we need to be leading the spaces ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it, I think that's everything that you're saying is, is is gospel, right? It's like it's it's almost like, hey, I'm in this room right now, but uh, 
<laughs> yeah, what are, no, what exactly. are our initiatives to move forward to make this place be not so uh yeah <laughs> legit like we had one person say you know like oh we're having we're having trouble getting like this community out like do you have any advice and the other co-founder of my group was like did you ask them though did you yeah. really try did you approach them at all did you reach out to them at all and they hadn't even have done that so I mean like the conversations are necessary like you can't just you can't do the same thing over and over again expecting different results because it's never going to happen mm -hmm. that's, that's, that is the bar it's really just about us being in those rooms and reminding people of those things and those messages because as much as, as knowledgeable as we all are in this room right now and all the memes that we we read in the gallery posts that we've seen the videos we've watched the experiences we've had a lot of these people avoided every single one of those things so we, yeah. have to, we, have, we have to revisit that almost every single time when we enter that room. Like, hey, guys, I've actually put together a book for you. For you though. Oh, my God, that's so brilliant. Check that out. We'll see you in a bit. Honestly, yeah, like, it, it really does. Absolutely. Sometimes you step in these rooms and you're just like, oh, I don't want to repeat myself, guys. But uh, and they're oh, like, wow, I had no idea that was happening here. It's like, bam, where, where, what? Where were you for the past six months? Okay, hold on. Let me just, let's run it back, right? So it's happening now that people are at least awakening to the idea they're seeing some of the things but then they're also like you know i can come out of the shadows now i think they're done making all that racket type mm. stuff so what you have to kind of do is just remind people continuously and just make it seem like it wasn't a trend this is what it is you know i am fighting on a daily basis and trust me if you say something or i don't see representation i will speak up on it now i do feel a little bit more support and when i do say so so i'm going to do that and now there's a bunch more resources that i can find to support this versus me feeling like i'm crazy that i'm the only like black person or a person of color indigenous person in this room right now so yeah it's definitely going to be a long battle but when you're in those rooms or if you are those companies or you are those agencies or whatever you, you have to do a self-check to be like yo i don't have none of those people in my room have we even asked them or, or spoken to people from that community have we done any outreach have we proactively made them feel safe in our space so that they do approach us and exactly. since it's our job can we just go to them right so yeah, it's definitely going to be about, it's, it's more so call out season, but it's also just pushing every single person to, to just do more. Right. You can't do the same thing and expect different results. I love that. Uh, I don't know where this person is from, if they're from a Grimshaw page or if they're just, I don't know. We got someone in the comments and I'm not, and I just want to say my partner is very French and he would definitely disagree with that. <laughs> I hope he's coming up with a comment. Cut out when you that, guy, that guy's what trolling for it? sure, right? What is it? What he's, is the comment? He's trolling for sure, right? No, he's oh, trolling. the comment. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good now. Okay, I said the comments just, I'm not white. I'm Quebecois, just saying. And I said, my boyfriend is very French and he would beg to differ. So I hope he jumps in the comments there. <laughs> what like, look, does that even mean? It's gotta be I don't know. I'm just thinking she's, you know, trying to say she is not, I, I don't, we're not even going to get into this today because it okay. ain't about her. Okay, 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 okay. In the industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. I we let's I have not eaten dinner yet. I'm starving. So I'm, does anybody have uh, any short closing statements before we head out? Black lives still matter. Black lives still Black matter. lives still matter. I just want to say that if you're a white person watching this right now and you are on the fence about supporting uh, Black Lives Matter or about stepping up or sharing something, don't think any more about it. Just do it because we need you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to just throw it out right now. There'll be more details coming, but February 20th, save the date. We're going to need everybody in Edmonton. We this need everybody's you. opportunity. Oh, 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 it's in the YEG. It's in Edmonton. Oh, I need yeah. you in the front yeah. lines, Eric. I need uh, you in the front uh, lines. Hey, hey, all right. <laughs> Let me... March plan. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make the call to action real quick. We're pulling up. I'll send you yeah. For sure, yeah. for sure. All right, everybody. Well, no, real, I quick, real, quick, real quick, real quick, real Joe. quick. Um, first of all, I want to thank each of us here, all of you, for, for being open-minded and open-hearted to having these conversations. Taylor, again, I, I, I said this almost a year ago to the day that I said you're the queen of all media, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I mean that sincerely. Thank you so much for having us here in this space. I want to thank everybody that commented, 
and is watching this on all the multiple platforms. Claire, you said, hey, you know what? We need to do this anti-racist work. And part of the reason why I stepped off the camera was to show everybody this book here. Yes. Love that book. How Love it. Anti-racist yeah. by Dr. Ivan Kendi. For all my white people brothers. People of Grimshaw sisters. did not like that recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> so they did um, not. For all my white brothers and sisters that want to try to understand or looking for a starting place to figure out, hey, you know what, how can I live a life of anti-racism? Because it's not good enough just to be not racist. You have to be anti-racist. Yep. And so, and I want to read a, a, a half a paragraph from yes. this book here, because I think it's important to everything that we have been discussing this evening. Mm. It says here, there is nothing I see in our world today and our history giving me hope that one day anti-racists will win the fight. That one day the flag of anti-racism will fly over a world of equity. What gives me hope is a simple truism. Once we lose hope, we are guaranteed to lose. But if we ignore the odds and fight to create an anti-racist world, then we give humanity a chance to one day survive, a chance to live in communion, a chance to be forever free. One of the greatest musicians of all time, Bob Marley said this probably 50 years ago. He said, get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up, don't give up the fight. And I think I wanna leave everybody with that sort of message tonight. We can't give up hope, we have to continue to fight. This, this is us, this is our lives, this is who we are as human beings. And we have to continue to have, to live a life of some sort of meaning. Yes, well, that's it, that's all. That's, that's bars, say. Joe, that's bars, Joe. Thank you, for, uh, thank, you, thank you for ending this sermon properly. <laughs> no. Just wait till, my next rap, yeah. wait till my next song and, and tell me if I don't have that line in, my, in, in, in the lyrics. Right? <laughs> no doubt. Inspiration for all. No, I, I, Taylor, I want to thank you again for having me as part of this as well. This was a fantastic time to just kind of vent more so than we did answer questions and stuff. But I do yeah. understand that these are the type of conversations that do need to happen. And hopefully people do tune in for the whole two hours plus and are able to gain nuggets even if it's just on a little bit to understand some things and it's just more reason for us to have more and more of these conversations mm -hmm. and more and more and more so people have more and more access points to really understand what about going on <laughs> yes sir <Yeah. laughs> so, so that said guys like honestly thank you so much for your time and thanks thanks for hanging out thanks for sharing your story sharing your energy sharing everything right now and yeah uh, let's you do it again so much i love this i love this i love every monday so thank you so much everybody have a great night and we will talk soon peace 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 peace, peace, peace. Bye. Bye. peace. yeah